It's 2024, the new year just passed, and right now I have in front of me here the brand new IdeaPad 5 Pro from Lenovo. This is a 16-inch laptop, and it has the brand new Intel chip. This one here is equipped with the 125H, the Ultra 5 brand new chip from Intel. This is one of Lenovo's kind of mid-range offerings. I got it for a really good price. It was about 1,200 Canadian dollars, which is about 850-ish US dollars, depending on the exchange rate. Uh, this laptop here is there for a really good price. It's a very premium laptop, all metal chassis, great screen, great keyboard, really good cooling. Everything is really nice on this laptop overall. I've been using it for a couple days already. Interesting part of this laptop isn't just that it's a brand new laptop from Lenovo because they've done the IdeaPad 5 Pro before and they're always really nice laptops. It's the fact that it has that brand new Intel chip in here with that brand new Intel Arc iGPU. I'm going to have three videos related to this laptop and the Intel chip in it. This video right here is my laptop review. I'm going to be doing my typical in-depth review of this specific laptop. So if you came here for this video to know how this laptop is, that's the purpose of this video. And then what I'm going to do is have two more videos. My second video is going to be multi-game testing on this laptop. This is not the Halo Intel Art Graphics. This is not the Ultra 7. This is not the Ultra 9. This is the Ultra 5, which is their budget offering. So if people were buying into this, probably are looking for something that's fairly budget and wondering, you know, can I play games on it? And then my third video is going to be a GPU showdown, iGPU showdown. In my basement, I have, I believe, five, six, seven, eight different devices right now with different iGPUs. So let's jump into right now. This is the laptop review video. So let's jump into it. Let's review this laptop. Okay, and let's have a look at the Lenovo website here. We're gonna do, this is Canada over here. This is what I paid, uh, $1,272. It's brand new, like it came out a few days ago. Uh, so I didn't have any discounts or anything like that, but it looks like in terms of translation from US to Canadian, uh, it's about the same here between the two of them. So we'll go with the US pricing because uh, it's probably easier for a lot of people to convert to whatever currency you use. Uh, but otherwise they look exactly the same. So you can see there's not a lot of customizability as it stands right now. So we basically have right here only really the SSD. You can go from 512 up to one terabyte uh, for an extra $32, whether that's just a value you want to or not. And let's look at the PS ref document here so we can get an idea of what will be to come in the future. So you can see here that it has a core ultra 5 125H. That's what I have here. There is going to be a core ultra 7 155H, which is a better CPU and it should have the better integrated graphics as well. Uh, it says at the top here that it has up to an Ultra 9 and up to an RTX 4050. So we're just going to have to see what they do and when they launch it. But And again, it looks like you can eventually get it up to 32 gigabytes of RAM as well. So um, And potentially you can also get it up to an OLED here as well. So it looks like there's going to be you know multiple iterations of this. This is just an early document here. It just says Intel Arc graphics, but the capability of those will depend on the CPU. If you get the 125 that I have here, that's the lowest of the Intel Arc graphics. 155 is kind of mid-range and you can get all the way up to the 185H. So they will perform differently depending on what you get. So you may not even necessarily want the dedicated graphics depending on how well these are going to perform, especially at the higher tiers up here. Okay, so the weight of the laptop itself here is 1,922. USB-C style charger, 100 watts. So you can always use like a guy nitrate charger, 355, and then combined, we'll be at about five pounds, 294. So it's uh, just about five pounds, almost right on the dot or so I would say. So it's a big boy laptop here, so I have to go with my wine angle lens here. Uh, metal top there, kind of like the IdeaPad, typical IdeaPad, like the higher end stuff. They have different models of IdeaPad. This is like the IdeaPad Pro, so it's gonna be premium. Metal bottom as well, so all metal chassis, metal top, metal bottom. On the bottom here we have Big rubber foot across there, two feet here, so it shouldn't slide too much. They're not super texturized, but it won't slide too much. Nice big vent intake there, and then speaker grills there, and they're on an angle, so that's probably pretty good. Ports and I.O. here, so on the left side we have HDMI, two USB-C, that's a Thunderbolt, that's the charging port there, so you're gonna get Thunderbolt and USB on top of that HDMI, that's good. Nothing on the back, just nice and sleek. And then on the right side there you get legacy ports, so two USB-A, and a full-size SD card and a headphone. Pretty well equipped, all things considered. It's actually a fairly well equipped laptop. It's a 16 inch, um, so I mean, you're gonna expect a lot of IO, but it's pretty thin. It may not show up on camera. It's probably gonna look thicker, but it's a fairly thin laptop. Uh, fairly premium overall, I would say. Inside, looks quite nice inside here. Uh, these are looking really nice actually these days, kind of taking the like premium 
ThinkBook style look to it. Uh, we have the microphone camera up here slider. It says please remove. And then we have our trackpad, a little bit off center. Some people don't like that, some do, but that's because we have a numpad. So this is a full style, like business style laptop. Um, so the keyboard itself is shifted over here. So the trackpad goes over. Very, very sleek metal color. Um, not quite as light color as like a MacBook Air, but not quite as dark as their like kind of gun metal. So typically these are fairly easy to get into. It's open right there so you don't want to let's pretend this is back on here you don't want to pry from the front here right because you're gonna actually snap those they're gonna break off whereas the back you can see they're like slightly more they still have a little bit of a hook but they're slightly more straight okay so now we're looking inside the laptop so it looks pretty good inside so far uh, battery here nice big battery we have a 72 an 84 watt hour battery that's bigger than I thought I thought it was smaller that's a nice big battery um, so, you know, overall we should get decent battery life. This Intel, I have no idea if it's good on battery or not. No clue whatsoever. This is the first time I've ever touched one of these. Uh, typically Intel did not have the best battery, but maybe it's fantastic. No idea. We'll find out. Intel AX211, so that's nice fast Wi-Fi there, replaceable. Looks like there's dual NVMe here. So this one here has a shield on it. You can fit in there a 228, uh, 2242, which is that size right there or you can fit in a larger 2280. So you can put in either right there. It's got a little bit of a heat shield on it. You may want to put a bit of a heat sink on it if you, you know, put a big one in there. And then the primary SSD. So the primary SSD is a 2242 size there, and then you have a second one. So it does support dual NVMe, dual storage, which is awesome. You just have to be aware that one of them is 2242. Uh, you can get these form factor up to about two terabytes fairly easily. And then of course you can get as much as you want there. RAM is probably either under there, or under there. It is soldered, so there's no upgrading the RAM on this device here. Uh, heat pipe and heat sink looks pretty good, especially since this is uh, this is just going to be CPU and iGPU. So this thing I'm guessing is actually going to run really cool. Dense fins here on these fans. Uh, they're very large with a dual heat pipe setup and dual exhaust just for the CPU. And this uses integrated graphics. But overall, it looks pretty good inside. I'm actually pretty happy with this. It looks quite robust. Big battery. Really good cooling and dual storage is nice. Okay, let's look at the uh, keyboard and trackpad. The actual keycaps are very shallow. Uh, if you can see that there, it's kind of typical on their idea pads these days. Yeah, they're pretty good overall. I've used this, it's the same as you get on the thinner uh, ThinkBook, not like the ThinkBook 16P, but like the 13 inch ones. They have basically the exact same. Yep, so I like it. Um, it's good, it's got nice, nice snappy keys. They feel nice and snappy, uh, very snappy actually. Uh, keyboard flex is like very minimal. There's a bit, but I mean, it's a metal chassis, right? Metal upper here. So you're not gonna get a lot of flex when you're typing. Um, the keys themselves are physically short, so I prefer if they were taller. Um, so, I mean, it's a really nice keyboard for a low profile keyboard. Uh, this feels better than a MacBook keyboard, absolutely. Um, but again, it's a shallow key. So I wish they were just slightly taller. Okay, let's have a look at the hardware in here and we'll basically just go through it. So we get the Intel Core, Ultra 5, I guess it's called, 125H. This naming is gonna take me a little while to get used to it. 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can see, oh, that's really fast RAM. You can see there it runs at 7,467. That is incredibly fast RAM. Uh, Western Digital SN740, good SSD. And then we have the Intel Arc graphics, and it is not dedicated graphics, this is an Intel integrated graphics. This is the brand new setup that comes with it. Let's see what kind of bloat we get here. So we'll scroll down here. This is all Intel Windows stuff. Lenovo now, like some of the stuff's pretty, you can take it off. Lenovo Vantage, you'll probably want to keep. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, McAfee. So we, of course you can come in here and do your updates. You go to just check for updates. This is where you're going to want to do updates before you get them through Windows because this will supply potentially BIOS updates is one important thing. But the other thing is it's going to give hardware specific updates. Uh, Intel Graphics Command Center, this might be a new thing. Um, I use Intel Arc Graphics actually as my desktop. as my daily driver, an A770. And that has the Intel Arc Control Center. So it's different than this. Um, but let's see. Intel. Oh, it looks like you can actually control some stuff. So you have built-in displays. If, if I hook up another one, it will work. Okay, you can... Oh, this is for video editing and video playback, I suppose. You can play with some stuff in here. And graphics driver, let's see here. Intel, da, 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 da. Let's let it do its thing. Three updates available, see that? I have a feeling that, you know, some people aren't gonna do this. They're just gonna go through the Windows stuff and it's potential that, you know, your 
uh, drivers aren't necessarily going to work well. So this is Intel Arc brand new drivers here. Um, you know, do this kind of stuff here. Lenovo Vantage didn't have these drivers and Windows didn't have these drivers. So, you know, I went to Intel. Start to turn it up. So if you have headphones, just be aware. Okay, so it's nice and clear and it gets pretty loud. Uh, definitely fairly loud, definitely pretty clear. Uh, it doesn't have any bass though, so uh, it's all right. I mean, they're fine. So I'll just watch my brother's recent video. Most of the other actors are at least competent, except for this kid and this guy. And Frankfurt isn't great, but his name is Frankfurt, so I'll give him a pass. I do have one beef with this movie though. What's with all the swag stuff? Swag is swag. That is so unswag. Dividends are swag. Swag. Yeah, so that's very crisp. So this is the type of laptop you're gonna to wanna to use, like the speakers for meetings, you know, that kind of thing, professional use. It's gonna be Excel and be great, but it just doesn't have bass for listening to music. The screen has good specs, nice and bright. So you get 2560 by 1600p, so uh, higher aspect ratio screen and then high resolution. So on a 16 inch screen, personally, I prefer to go 1600p or more. It's nice and crisp, the text all looks good. Brightness is good. I wouldn't say, you know, it's the brightest screen out there, but it's bright enough. You know, 350-ish nits, 400 nits is probably where it's sitting at or so. Um, looks good to me though, nice and bright. Pull that down there. Nice blacks, anti-reflective, no IPS bleed at all. Reds are good. Reds are an area where typically, reds are an area where typically if you have a low color space, a shallower color space, it'll struggle. So I always like this video because it starts with the reds. I can see they look good, nice bright reds. Yeah, blues look good, nice and bright, very vibrant. Yellows are good. Yeah, the reds are really nice. So, you know, you're getting that, you're getting that 99% sRGB color spaces. Yeah, it's a really, really nice screen. Yeah, very, very good screen. So it's a nice big screen, small bezels, enjoy to look at. Getting up to that 120 hertz is quite nice. That's not guaranteed on, you know, creator style laptops. Um, so it's a, you know, that's great. Okay, and here's a look at the built-in webcam looking right at me. Um, I don't have a ton of light in front, a fair bit of light coming in front, but it's definitely brighter in the back. Um, it's actually a nice, it's a nice webcam. Um, it looks like it's polling rate is pretty good. You can see there, you know, not bad. Uh, and it's decent enough resolution. So this will be great for me. I'll have the results at the end of the video uh, before the gaming section. I'll show you all my different benchmarks, but I do want to check the noise here. This is on performance mode. It sounded pretty good there. Uh, I'm gonna run it again. I'm gonna do it on balanced here now. Uh, balance isn't producing any fan noise. My fan in my house is on because my vent decided to turn on and warm up my office. Let's have a look at some benchmarks here. So we can see here that we're getting actually very good scores here on Cinebench R23 on performance mode, 1400 uh, for a score there. That's really good. That's looking at last gen, you know, kind of higher end CPU. Some of them can do better, but that's actually really good for being down the stack for Intel this offering. We'll have to see how these, you know, line up against one another once more of these come out. And there's more tests and different laptops, but from what I can see, that's pretty good. And then here I went into balanced mode. So I just basically lowered the fan speeds quite a bit. The noise went down quite a bit as well. And we're looking at a decrease in score, not that significant actually, down to 13,800. So you are getting significantly quieter fans to the point of being almost completely inaudible and you're only getting a slightly lower score. And of course the system runs uh, cool as well. Time spy here is actually really good. So we're getting 9,000 on the CPU. That's a good score and almost 3,000 on the GPU. 3,000 on the iGPU here is basically what I get on my Lenovo Legion Go, uh, which is, you know, amongst the best uh, iGPU you can get on the market. So that is a fantastic score for this Intel Arc right here. And then we're looking at the SSD here and you can see here that it's a Gen 4 SSD, good speeds, SN740, really good speeds here, 5,000 reads, 3,800 writes. So, and then Wi-Fi here is good as well. This is about as fast as my Wi-Fi can get here out of my Wi-Fi. And here is the shocker. Battery life is incredibly good 
on this laptop here. It is a fairly big battery. It's an 80 watt hour battery, but this Intel CPU is actually able to get really good battery life. So you can see here a 93% battery, it's estimating around nine and a half hours watching 1080p 60 YouTube. And if you actually look at the hardware info there, you can see the actual draw. And yeah, it's, it's just shy of 10 hours. So, you know, watching YouTube, this becomes a 10 hour laptop. And this is not with some weirdly abnormal brightness. This is 75 to 80% brightness. And just on silent mode, you know, I didn't do any weird tweaks or anything like that. So incredibly good performance on the battery out of this Intel, which is a huge step up from last generation. Okay, now we'll do Baldur's Gate, a game that is extremely relevant and awesome. So we'll try some indoor and outdoor stuff. Outdoor at Baldur's Gate itself is going to be brutal. That game, it's just brutal. So we're going to try 1600p, see if we can get away with that. Um, again, this game is not easy to run. So if you haven't played it and you think, oh, it's just a top-down game, and yeah, that doesn't, that's not relevant here. Um, we're looking for like probably Steam Deck performance up to Legion Go range. Um, ROG Ally. It's not going to get as high as the Legion Go or the ROG Ally because this isn't the highest tier of iGPU. The Intel Arc has multiple tiers. This is the 125H, which I think is actually the lowest Intel Arc iGPU. It's going so in this video here, I'm going to be ex recording externally. There's a reason why. That's because I want you guys to see exactly what I'm seeing and hear what I'm hearing. This is how I want to record this because this is specifically about this laptop. It's not an iGPU only test. My second video, I'm going to test probably eight to 10 very demanding games on this laptop. Um, and you know, that will be done with game capture obviously because it's not then just about the laptop itself. It's actually about the performance of the iGPU. That'll be cool. And then my third video is actually going to be a comparison. So I'm going to bring in several AMD GPUs, different options. I'm also going to bring in, you know, some Vega graphics. I'm also going to bring in another Intel option as well. Last year's, you know, more powerful options. And then also, you know, I'll bring in like maybe a Steam Deck or something like that. 1600p performance FSR understanding and it's doing pretty well. It's a little bit below the Legion Go right off the bat, which sits closer to 60 in an indoor setting like this, but it's pretty good. Uh, this is what performance FSR gets you in an indoor setting. Uh, let's try balance because that's normally what I do on uh, my Legion Go. Yeah, so the Legion Go would be getting us more like 55 in a setting like this on balanced. There's a rat. But again, it's a... Um, that's the 780M. That's the highest end AMD iGPU on the market. This is the lowest end Intel Arc iGPU. So uh, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison. When I do my comparison video, I will bring in lower uh, GPUs from AMD. I'll bring in the 680M from last generation, and then I'll bring in the Steam Deck, and I'll also bring in a 760M. It'll just be on low 1200p native. Yeah, look at that. Low 1200p native. Look at that great performance, it's, right? Very good. Indoors, of course. Let's turn it up. So we'll go with you know slightly higher settings here. Let's go with medium, it's a little bit more fair. And we'll just try on a little bit of FSR to balanced. I don't really wanna go above that for 1200p, but look at that. So this is medium now with just balanced FSR. We'll go with low 1200p balanced. Yeah, that's pretty good actually, 30 FPS. This is way above the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck cannot perform like this FSR. That's off, right? Very good performance. We're gonna throw on some balanced here and yeah, that's good right there. That's above the Steam Deck for sure. Without without a doubt, that is above the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is 800, 800p, this is 1200p. So this is smashing the Steam Deck as it is right now. This area right here will obliterate your GPU. Yeah, so basically in summary here, it's extremely playable, extremely playable. The lows are what I was worried about, like not the raw performance. This is really good. We're like 40 average, and then you know we're dripping down, dipping down to only like 24 for the lows. That is very good for an iGPU. Let's try a little bit of Resident Evil here. We're at 1200p, we're on low, with just balanced FSR. This is a, obviously a very demanding game. So, you know, I'm just throwing like some of the most demanding stuff at this GPU for this video, just so you guys get a benchmark idea. So obviously, you know, anything below this will run incredibly well. Uh, so games, most games from 2022 are going to run very well. Anything before that, of course, too. And a lot of games from 2023 are going to be much less intensive. But this is just balanced FSR 1200p on relatively low settings. Like that, let's go medium five, whatever, sure. 
see if it tanks the performance. It'll just look a little better. Oh yeah, still getting the good performance there. So kind of like a low medium mix here. Uh, but I am going to throw on more FSR because the higher the resolution, the more FSR you can get away with. So we'll turn it on to ultra performance, but we're at 1600p. It should look actually better. Yeah, it looks better because um, it's a higher, it's rendering out the native resolution. Uh, but I've then downscaled even further to ultra performance, which is roughly the same. And you can see the performance is basically the same. So this is ultra performance FSR at 1600p with that low medium mix. That's kind of small, you can't really see that, but um, yeah, it looks way better this way, running like on a native. Okay, so I've been using this laptop now for a day, day and a half. Um, done all kinds of benchmarks on it. I do have a lot more videos coming. I'm gonna have at least two more, as I mentioned in the intro. If we exclude the brand new Intel chip, and you know, we don't talk about that right now, how's the laptop itself? It's fantastic, actually. Internally, we get dual NVMe, which is awesome, so you get lots of upgradability. Only 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, so if that's okay for you, that's gonna be fantastic. I do hope that they offer a 32 gigabyte version of this laptop uh, for people who are gonna be keeping this for years down the road, but for a lot of people, 16, I guess is fine. That's gonna be great. Uh, the memory runs very fast, so that IGP really benefits from that as well, so that's good. Uh, internally, the cooling is fantastic as well, you know, basically over overkill cooling realistically, so that's great. Battery life was shockingly good. I'm coming from, you know, 12th gen, 13th gen Intel, which battery life was always a problem. Like, it just was. Every laptop that I tested, Intel was a problem, unless you got, you know, a very low wattage, like 1215U, 1315U. Um, you know, you're, we're gonna suffer for battery. This thing here, battery was not an issue. Um, the screen on it is gorgeous, very, very nice screen. The only thing, the speakers aren't fantastic. They're all right. 120 hertz refresh rate on that screen is really nice too. Then we get to the Intel chip uh, for actual gaming performance was fantastic. Again, this is not the highest end Intel Arc graphics. This is kind of the lowest one, but this is all that is available in Canada right now, the 125H, because we are going from basically, I'm gonna say it, crappy XE graphics that have been around for years uh, very outdated and we've just leapfrogged generations, right? So now we're going head to head between Intel and AMD. I haven't done my iGPU test yet, but based on the games that I play all the time, like Baldur's Gate, I play this game all the time on various different iGPUs, Legion Go, Steam Deck, uh, iGPUs on laptops, dedicated graphics. I can say this is outstanding performance for Intel out of nowhere, out of absolutely nowhere. They just came out and released this thing and it's fantastic. They just basically leapfrogged whole generations. So my hat's off to Intel. Credit where it's due. I like I always I often rip on Intel for you know bad laptop battery life and this kind of stuff. But as someone who's a very early adopter of Intel Arc dedicated graphics, and I've been promoting it and you know giving it the time of day it needed to really flourish on my channel since it came out, I'm very happy to see that on the dedicate on the integrated side of it, it's in some ways it's better. As it stands right now, if you wanna pick up this laptop, it's a fantastic laptop from Lenovo. Uh, these IdeaPad 5 Pros are great. I had one last year briefly um, and it was an awesome laptop. Very, very nice. All things considered, it's a great laptop. And normally you know, I'm hesitant to move towards Intel on these type of chips here because you, your graphics performance blows, right? Like you don't have a dedicated GPU, so your graphics suck. And then you have to get an NVIDIA model if you want to get good graphic performance. That's not a thing anymore. It was actually a very nice buy-in price for this, despite the fact that this is kind of their mid-range offering. The IdeaPad 5 is kind of their mid-range. It's very premium, all metal chassis. You know, there's no compromises on this laptop. It's very nice. I would like to see 16, 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's about it though. Otherwise, very nice laptop, all things considered. Intel did a very good job. Lenovo did a very good job. This is making 2024 look very exciting for me.